Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to stream to OBS using FFmpeg instead of NDI. Now there's several reasons you might want to do this. Um, you may have uh, an operating system like FreeBSD that doesn't use NDI and you want to stream from that computer to another computer. NDI, NDI might break, uh, which it has in my case. Um, also NDI is closed source. Um, and it's good to have a fallback, which is um, why we'll be using FFmpeg in this case. What I'm going to do is um, show you I've got the Mac over here, and I'm actually um, streaming from the Mac with OBS Studio to um, another computer running Linux um, with OBS Studio, which I'm recording the stream on. So what I'm going to do is show you how this actually works. And as you can see, it says recording, but it's actually streaming. So what I'm going to do is um, take you through the preferences in OBS Studio so that you can actually set it to stream to another computer on the network and how you can receive that stream on the second computer and record, and, and record it. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I've created a uh, new um profile here called um ffmpeg stream to obs and what i'm going to do is open the preferences and come across to um two sections firstly the video so you can see here the video is set um the base canvas resolution and the output resolution are both 1920 by 1080 so that's the first step is that we don't want to um, rescale the video uh, when we stream it because um, it will actually um, degrade the picture quality, uh, especially with things like text. So the next step we need to do is come across to the output section of um, the preferences. And we're going to come across to the recording tab here. So what you'll see is in this setup here, what I've got is ffmpeg output type output to url and under there i have file path or url and this uh, url is um, the ip address of the second computer and a open port so on my linux machine what i've done is opened port 6881 um, and you can do that with ip tables or gufw which is a uh, nice and easy to use graphical interface for um, opening ports on your firewall. So those are the first two things. Next thing we need to do is set the container format to MPEG TS. Now, what we're going to be doing is actually putting um, H.264 and AAC audio inside an MPEG TS container. And there's a little step you need to do um, to enable that that I'll get to in a second. So the next two things we've got here are the video bit rate, which I've set to 4000, and the keyframe intervals, which will, will by default be set to um, 250. Uh, what you want to do is actually lower it out about to about 25 um, keyframes, um, because the more keyframes you have, the longer the delay um, uh, in the stream so if you have a lot of keyframes you can have a, um, a delay when you sort of you know click windows and stuff so that's the first two and um, that's the other steps here the video bit rate and the keyframe now this uh, is the important bit what you need to do is check this box show all codecs even if potentially incompatible um, and then what we're going to do is set the video coder to libx264 um, and the audio encoder to AAC. Now the important thing here is the video encoder settings, if any. And what we've got here is dash preset equals ultra fast, and that's uh, sort of like the encoding. Um, we've got the CRF value, which is um, for the quality, um, and 18 provides a good balance between um, size and quality. Um, the QP um, equals zero is another quality setting. And then what we're doing here is um, using tune zero latency 
um, to improve the um, the latency of the stream. And finally, what we're doing is pix underscore format equals yuv 420p. So that's basically the settings on the sending machine. What we did was we set the video um, to 1920 by 1080. Came, came across to the output tab. I went to the recording. We set the output to URL. We put the IP address and the port of our receiving machine. We set the container format to MPEG TS. The video bit rate, um, the keyframe interval, and again, um, the, the higher the keyframe interval, uh, the the greater the delay in the stream. I found um, again. Show all codecs, even if potentially incompatible, you can set that to H.265 if you want to play around. And the encoder settings here again. So that's the that's the actual um, machine that we're sending on. So if I click there. So there's about a um, second or two delay. So it's maybe not quite as um, instant as NDI and... Um, you know, you can play around with the settings on this um, to actually improve the uh, the latency. But what I'm going to do now is actually um, switch back to the Linux machine and show you the um, receiving settings. So what I've got here is a um, still of um, the receiving settings. So what we've got here um, is we've created a new scene and we've added a media source. And in that media source, what we've done is untick local file. And basically what we've done here is two things. One, we've um, enabled um, hardware decoding when, enable, um, when available. And secondly, for the input URL, what we're doing is UDP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 6881. And that's the um, 127.0.0.1 is the IP address of the, the loopback interface um, on this machine. So that's the local address and port. So that's all you have to do on the um, receiving machine is um, use create a new media source, um, check um, use hardware decoding when available, and put in the um, the input URL here. You can you can also use um, VLC um, to receive the streams, and that has a few more options um, of actually setting the buffer and stuff. You can also change the network buffering here to try and um, improve the latency. But that's basically all we need to do on the um, receiving machine. So what we've got here again is um, the Mac, and um, if I open Finder. To find a window sometimes actually um it's it's being a bit sluggish now for some reason so one just can yeah and it seems to have cut out or something so let me just switch back and of course it stops oh no there we go i was going to say it's going to stop working when i'm um actually uh doing the recording um but what i can also do is um stop this stream and actually stream directly with FFmpeg. So what I'm going to do is just switch back to this um, scene here uh, for a second while I stop recording on, um, stop sending the stream with OBS. And what I'm going to do now is uh, stream with FFmpeg. So I'll give that a second and I'll switch back and it should kick in. And for some reason, it's not. OK. Um, so you can stream with FFmpeg. So let me just see why that's not working. Let me just kill that for a second. That's the correct IP address. Um, and let me start that again. So you can stream directly with um, FFmpeg to another instance of um, OBS. So, okay, here we go. 
now we've got it up. So what you can see here is um, I have FFmpeg open in the terminal and um, you can see a few glitches on the screen there. Um, and the reason for that is I didn't actually set a, um, a keyframe um, in this instance in the command um, like I should have. Um, so what you need to actually do is um, set a keyframe um, in the FFmpeg command to avoid some sort of glitching. Because if I sort of move this around, you'll see um, some artifacts um, on the screen. But we can also, as I said, we can use FFmpeg directly um, to stream to another instance of OBS Studio. But um, you may just want to, you know, fire up OBS Studio um, to do this. So what I'm going to do is just come back and um, switch back to this and kill that for a second and start streaming with OBS again. Switch back to the other scene. Okay, there we go. So here's the um, the terminal open. And um, let me just see if I can reach across to the keyboard and clear that. All right, so what I'm doing here on the Mac is um, I'm using FFmpeg and on the Mac, um, what you have to do is the format, you have to use um, dash F AV foundation, whereas on Linux, it would be um, X11. So that's the only difference between the commands really. Um, on Linux um, versus the Mac. So what we've got here is um, we're recording the size 1920 by 1080. Um, so that's recording this whole screen. Um, and basically it's the same sort of settings we put into OBS Studio, except I forgot to put the keyframes in. Um, so what we're doing is libx264, preset ultra fast. Um, I also forgot to put the um, the tune zero latency in there. So what I'll do is I'll um, update the um, update the uh, command. Um, so let me just see if I can. Uh, oh fuck! Um, <laughs> Didn't want to do that. I was trying to stream two things at once. Um, uh, let me just reach around the keyboard. So basically, it's the same sort of thing. We're um, sending. Um, X264 video inside an MPEG TS container. Um, and you can set the max bit rate. Um, and again, what we're doing here is um, specifying dash F MPEG TS uh, UDP colon slash slash, then the IP address and port of the receiving machine. And remember, you need to open the port on the, on the receiving machine for this to work. And all also the packet size, uh, which seems to be important for this to work. So that's basically um, doing the same thing, but uh, without OBS Studio, just using um, FFmpeg directly. And again, I did forget in this um, example um, code to actually put the tune zero latency and the keyframes in as well. Um, but this is basically a, um, a, you know, it's a poor man's NDI as it were. Uh, and it can be useful if you, as I said, you've got a computer that you want to stream the output of to OBS, but that computer doesn't support NDI, which, um, as I said, FreeBSD does have packages for um, the OBS NDI plugin, but there's no NDI package for some reason. So they've actually built a package that doesn't work um, for OBS Studio and released it, which is just silly. Um, so that's why in a previous video, when I wanted to show something um, on FreeBSD, I used FFmpeg to stream it to OBS um, on Windows and recorded the output there. So that's one use case scenario is where you've got a computer that doesn't support NDI, but you actually want to stream the output of that computer um, to OBS Studio. Um, the second one is um, NDI stops working, um, which it did in my case, and I 
being too lazy to actually figure out why it stopped working. Um, and the third reason is because um, NDI is closed source and you may want to um, have an open source alternative um, and something that you've got a bit more control over. So that's basically how you can stream from one computer um, to another one um, using FFmpeg instead of um, NDI. And some of the some of the issues um, that you'll you'll get with it. Um, so let me close that. And I have noticed that it's um, maybe it's my network, but it's actually not responding here. So let me just switch back. Okay, so you can see that's gone for some reason. Um, maybe network congestion or just sod's law. Um, doing a demo, sometimes stuff goes awry. But um, let me just open the settings for OBS again and just take you through it. Preferences. We went to video. And we set the output to 1920 by 1080 um, for the base canvas resolution and the output. Um, so we're not rescaling the, um, the image because if you were to... Um, put the output at say 720 when you bring it into OBS studio you'd have to resize the wind you'd either have to have a small window or you'd have to resize the window to fit the canvas and if you do that what happens is um, you upscale from 720 to 1080 the text um, gets pixelated so the next thing we did was we went to the output uh, the recording tab and again, we set the FFmpeg, um, FFmpeg output type to output to URL. We put in the, um, the path to um, the UDP address to the second machine on the network with its IP address and port. We set the container format to MPEG TS. Set a bit, video bit rate. And we reduced the keyframe interval from 250 to 25 um, because the larger the keyframes, the, the greater the lag. Um, and again, the important thing is to check the show all codecs, even if potentially incompatible checkbox. And that will then allow you to um, choose any um, video and audio um, uh, type that you want to put into the MPEG um, TS container because by default it will use uh, was it MPEG2 video or something um, so basically check that box put it to libx264 and AAC and set the audio bit rate and then in here we've got the video encoder settings with PSET ultra fast um, the CRF of um, 18 um, the quality of zero, zero, um, tune zero latency, and the PIX format. And that's basically all we need to do on the um, sending machine. And again, what I did was um, I created a new profile for that up here. You can see FFmpeg stream to OBS. So what we did was, first of all, we created a new profile, um, applied applied those settings and then when we want to stream we basically do start recording not start streaming um, and the reason why we're doing that is because the recording tab actually has more options than the streaming tab so that's how you can stream to another instance of OBS on the network using FFmpeg instead of um, NDI either from within OBS studio or on the command line just using um, FFmpeg um, without OBS Studio at all.